so, so excited to have you here, Heather, in Nurses Outside the Box. You are a phenomenal nurse outside the box in Canada. I'm so happy to have you here. Welcome. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Awesome. Um, Heather, I'm curious about the first thing. You are from Canada, uh, which is different than from the, I have a lot of nurses from the United States, also from Australia. But I'm curious, tell us a little bit more about what do you do right now as a nurse that will typify you a little bit as a nurse outside the box? I'm really curious. For sure, yeah, I am. I was outside of the box already uh, about seven years ago. I started working for a cosmetic surgery clinic as a patient care coordinator. So not wearing scrubs every day, uh, doing a lot of the teaching and guidance that comes before and after cosmetic surgery procedures, but also sales. There is, there is a, a very strong sales element to that kind of work and, and we juggle the ethics and, and the closing of surgeries. So that was um, my role for a number of years. And then I moved on to medical copywriting. So I started a company that provides strategy and uh, consulting content and copywriting for plastic surgeons and aesthetic medical clinics. I help them navigate the, uh, the advertising guidelines and ethics that are required for medical advertising and also create patient teaching materials. So I'm curious, how did you get there? Because I assume you went to regular nursing school, right? Yeah. So that's a about, tell us a little about your story. I'd love to hear about where, how did you, and how in the world did that matter, right? Oh, it's been a long winding road. Um, I did a lot of things before I became a nurse. I went back to school uh, late. This was uh, probably already a second or third career choice for me. And I went to college for nursing. Out of there, I worked in a hospital for a while. I worked in long-term care for a while. And I just really... I wanted a nine to five schedule, which is not common, as you know, in nursing, um, but I wanted that, you know, I wanted to not get up at 5 a.m. And, uh, and I've always been really interested in cosmetic surgery and things that are aesthetic. And my background before this was in makeup and special effects, and I'm an artist. Oh, so... Wow. Yeah, so those those elements of things really interest me. It actually, incidentally, I love wound care because of that. I, I think of it as sculpture. I really like creating a beautiful dressing, you know, and just packaging it up all neatly and, and that manipulation of skin and, and helping it to come together and heal. It's artistic, right? <laughs> Oh, good idea. You know, remind me, I, and it's a little story on the side, but I had a son who had a significant injury on his foot and he was seven at the time. He loved to do it. He loved to, yeah. dress, he to look at it. And my daughter was like, ah, and she's like, oh, I love it. Sure. So yeah. I yeah. It's very tactile and, uh, and it is artistic. I find for me and because of my background and my interest, cosmetic surgery was also very appealing to me. Um, I love sales, I love people, I love patient teaching. So to push myself into that area, I actually, I ended up doing a ton of Googling. I did a lot of searching and my search queries looked kind of like, what can nurses do outside of the norm, you know, like I was searching for, help me, there must be something else because I was stuck in this loop of uh, long-term care facilities and hospital bedside care and I didn't want either. And I had no idea what else there was. I did a lot of digging um, by, by chance or by fate, came, came across a number of cosmetic surgery clinics and I just decided to craft a detailed cover letter selling myself as a person and send it out to clinics. Um, and I picked one that I really like and, and I pitched them the fact that they needed somebody like me on their team and they went for it. <laughs> so that's how I got my first job as a patient care coordinator. Wow. And yeah. so when you did that, um, how was the support from other nurses or from other people around you? I mean, actually, specifically for nurses, did you get a lot of good or negative feedback going outside of the role of regular nursing, right? Yeah, I think I've gotten a mixed bag. I, I think I get uh, blank stares and confusion sometimes. You know, they say, so what do you do then? Whereas they're, they're looking for the nitty gritty part of the nursing, you know, do you give medications? Do you, do you catheterize anyone? And, and do you do this and that? And 
no, my patients are stable and happy. And a lot of it has to do with therapeutic communication, right? And tapping into that side of nursing, which is critical because people going through a big change, a big decision like this, they need that guidance. And um, yeah, so trying to explain to people that this is nursing and there are really important uh, nursing best practices and nursing knowledge used in this process of teaching and guiding people. That's, that's uh, tricky. Um, yeah, I don't think I got any negative feedback, but just kind of some confusion or lack of awareness about it. Yeah. Yeah, and I think as we move more into innovations in nursing, there'll be more of that, right, as we go yeah. on. Yeah. Now, I do get that with my current role. I do get people saying, um, you know, so I guess you've, you've gone completely away from nursing and uh, they, they don't see any connection at all. Uh, whereas I do, it's not bedside nursing. That's true. Um, I do pick up some nursing shifts. I have actually been picking up shifts in a, in a cosmetic surgery OR, which is great, but, but the writing work, it, it describes all of that. It taps into all of that. And I have to be super familiar with health Canada, with CNO guidelines, with the CPSO guidelines, um, very immersed in, in those things. So to me, it's, yeah. I'm, I'm curious, I totally agree with you, but I'm curious, how did you get from the first one, right? From working yeah. in, in that, to then going to writing? I mean, what, what, what happened there? Yeah, uh, I, I, I sort of, I don't know, I shifted. Uh, I've always loved writing when I was in nursing school. I wrote essays for grant money, um, got a couple of awards for writing essays. Uh, I was valedictorian, I guess, because they knew I liked to talk, so they put me, they made, they made me valedictorian. Um, these are things I, I just really enjoy, is uh, crystallizing and disseminating information, breaking it down in, in an understandable way for people. And I really love sales. I love, you know, explaining a procedure in a way that makes it appealing and, and dispels fears and worry. All of that translates into copywriting, definitely. But I'm in I'm in a unique position as a nurse and a copywriter that um, I can do what a lot of copywriters can't, which is to understand biology and, and legal laws and all of these things. So something that I found was that the plastic surgeon I was working for had a hard time finding anyone to write uh, blogs or web pages that didn't sound weird or a little off, you know, because of a lack of knowledge. And he hired a medical marketing company and I reached out to them because I needed a little extra money and asked them if they had any writing work I could pick up. So that was the, that was the first little step was I just asked if I could do any work for them. And it turned out that they, uh, they really had this gap that they needed to fill that somebody with medical knowledge could also write persuasively and explain things and understand uh, the nuances of copywriting and not just write like a textbook, right? There's, there's a difference between doing that and, and writing um, detailed medical papers that are kind of like yawn, you know? <laughs> yeah, so that's how I got into it. I, I picked it up a little bit at a time and after doing that for, I want to say about a year, uh, I just decided that I, I, there's enough of a need out there that I could do that full time and started a business. Do you love it? What do you like most about it? What do you like? Um, most? Yeah, you know, I, I'm not going to lie and say that it's easy. Um, I do a great job of marketing for other people and like a lot of uh, freelancers or entrepreneurs, I find it difficult to market myself. Um, I don't know if you've ever experienced that. I hear that from a lot of people that even they do social media, they do marketing, they're really good at it, but not for themselves, right? So like my own website is sadly neglected. My own, uh, you know, my, my funnel for getting leads for myself is, is stressful for me. I'd say that's an element that I don't like. It's always, it's nice if people just show up and offer you business. Um, okay. I love having my own schedule. I do work on the beach sometimes if there's a Wi-Fi. I do spend afternoons at coffee shops. Um, what's yeah. not to like about that, right? That's great. So it's, 
it's it's there's pros and cons for sure it's a bit up and down but i love being in charge of my schedule and having the freedom to hustle hard and push towards something and then reap the rewards of that and i don't feel like i'm working hard for someone else's gain only but also for my own yeah totally i love it what's your favorite social media platform i gotta ask that ah uh, right now it's linkedin for sure yeah, I completely abandoned all my other social platforms when I discovered LinkedIn. Uh, when I discovered what it was doing um, this January, it was the first time I really got active on there. And I love it because most of the people I encounter there are motivated, generally positive, right? They're, they're forward thinking. Um, they want to talk collaboration. They want to share ideas. And so if somebody's feeling stuck and struggling, and can't think of what to do. If, if they spend time on there, um, I think very quickly they're going to, you know, have their mind opened a little and discover opportunities and ideas. Like you just can't help it. Um, I don't know any other platform that is that kind of like productive and positive. I really like that. Yeah. I love it too. I just found in December and the same kind of thing. Boom. Yeah, you, you and me both. I think a lot of people really just found it December and January and what a game changer with the pandemic and everything going on. People t stuck working from home, <laughs> not by choice, but you know, and they're on LinkedIn and discovering there are millions and millions of people to share ideas with who are generous, who are helpful. Yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. I'm curious, what would you say to nurses who are listening to this? And yeah. they say, yeah, I want to have, I want to do something like this too, right? Yeah. Would I would say there is more available than you think. Um, we talked about this a little bit before. I know uh, it can seem like there are no options. And maybe we get into the habit of expecting people to sort of lay it out for us, what the options are. And if, they're, if you're stuck in that way of thinking, it you won't see anything. It, you have to have a bit of an entrepreneurial spirit to poke around and brainstorm, uh, do some searching, have some conversations and turn over some rocks and see what's available. But I, I would encourage any nurse who does not want to do what we would consider a typical bedside nursing uh, role to consider that nurses can be business owners, nurses can be entrepreneurs, uh, nurses can be creative. It does not have to be serious. Um, your work does not have to be grueling. You can, you can make something enjoyable and fun and independent out of your career. Um, I actually just started volunteering with an organization here called the Independent Business Special Interest Group, IBSIG. And that is an Ontario based, I, I know you've got them in the States, I've seen one on LinkedIn, uh, but this is an Ontario based business group. And it's really, it's to help nurses who are, who are just looking for ideas and looking for support and they're confused about the legalities of running their own business and guidelines. It's a website to give uh, help for them. And they cover everything from, you know, foot care nurses, um, people who own uh, Reiki and different holistic studios who are nurses or uh, who do dietary consulting, nutrition consulting, lots of stuff like that. Yeah. I love it. And it's really out there. And I love all the, all the things you mentioned. It's just phenomenal. If nurses want to get in touch with you, right, how, what is the best way to reach you? I assume LinkedIn. Um, your website? What, what's the best yeah, one? yeah, I'm going to say LinkedIn for sure. Uh, my website is Quill Drive. Uh, so www.quilldrive. But uh, definitely reach out to me on LinkedIn. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's amazing. This was a wonderful interview. I've always said I, I want to talk longer, but we said we were only 20 minutes. So I'm curious if because we want to end a little bit for nurses, right? If you would give one tip or one advice for, for nurses right now who, who want to be innovators like you. I mean, you are, yes. you, have a, you are such a phenomenal innovator in, in, in what I see you doing and everything that you've done. You are I just, I just do scary things. I don't wait until it's not scary. And I have fallen on my face before I should say, like, uh, I take risks and sometimes that pans out. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I w any any nurse who is thinking about doing something a little outside the box or starting a side hustle, I would also really encourage them not to be intimidated by the idea of all or nothing. I see this a lot with um, copywriting in general too, uh, nothing to do with medical, but just people who want to do that. And, and they say, you know, when do I leave my regular job? Or what if, what if I don't have uh, enough money at first? And I would say you probably don't. Like, don't. <laughs> if you can at all wait, don't jump out of the frying pan into the fire. It is possible to do a lot of uh, independent nursing business work on the side. Mm -hmm. So why not pick up something a little bit at a time on the weekends or in the evenings and get used to it, right? And build up your comfort and your knowledge. And then when you're ready at some point, go for it. Awesome. And do it without, yeah, and you're right. I, I love what you said at the end is that um, it's not always roses, right? But just mm. to go. Yeah, no, I have definitely made mistakes. Um, right now, I'm, I'm happy with my choices, but I am, I am always pivoting and reassessing. And uh, I, I'm like multi-passionate. I like to do multiple things anyway. So I get bored with just one thing. I, I like to mix it up. But um, yeah, you have to be flexible. If you're going to change gears and pick up a business, get ready to be flexible, roll with it. There's going to be ups and downs. Fair. Yeah. It, it's possible. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Thank you so much. This was a wonderful interview. My pleasure. Wonderful. For any nurses who are, please put your comments down below. If you have any questions, write for Heather as well. Yeah, I'm happy to answer questions, especially I know a lot of nurses have questions about getting into cosmetic surgery. It's a, it's a competitive field. There's a lot of interest and there, there's more to it than just being a nurse with great skills. It's a lot of social skills and selling, but you can definitely learn that. And I'm happy to give tips and advice. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks so much. Definitely reach out to Heather on LinkedIn, right? Any other place. And yeah, let's make a difference. Thank you, Heather. Thank you so much.